There are various schools of thought mm -hmm. about how much design developers need to know and how much code designers need to know. What's your take on that? So for me, I feel like designers and developers need to know as much about each other as possible. So I think designers need to know the medium they are designing for. So you can't be like, oh, I'm going to be a theoretical carpenter and I'm going to just design things and nothing, you know, and not know how the medium feels like and how it looks like. So you need to know how browsers will render your things. So at the very least, uh, I think designers need to understand how CSS works, how HTML works, the very basics mm -hmm. of it at the least. And I think for developers, it's the same thing. What are you doing? Like if you're writing front-end code, you need to understand what it will result in. Like if you're writing code, that puts a big red button and customers or the people who visit your sites don't click on it. You know, you need to know why. You need to understand the design sure. intention. What do you feel is the ideal workflow between developers and designers? I mean, I feel like designers and developers need to work together for the whole process. Like, I think uh, when you're designing, you work with the developer, and the developer understands the design better, the designer better, how they were thinking, and the de designer understands how the developer is thinking. What are the biggest pain points in those relationships be de between developers and designers? I think right now the biggest pain point for developers are, I think it's being left out of the design process, yeah. like not being included early on. And I think at, for the designers, it's just really hard to give feedback to developers once like think the website is ready and uh, the designer wants to point out all these design details that's been missed, but they feel really uncomfortable pointing it out because it's like the developers don't even understand what that is. Like, why should should I care if this red here doesn't match the red on the navigation element or whatever? So those are like small details that matter, but the developers don't understand it and designers are reluctant to pursue that thought because they're like, developers don't really quite understand that point, so maybe I should let it be. And so I think that kind of feeling of being not part of the communication is a big deal. How, how do they break through that though? Do they just have to get over the discomfort? I think uh, a lot of designers are still kind of reluctant to press on the little details because now pixel perfection is like, uh. no, no. <laughs> and so a lot of them are like, I'm not actually talking about pixel perfection, though. And I'm like, yes, you're right, you're not. But it's just that uh, a lot of developers are like rolling their eyes over right now on like, oh, the color red, you must be like, you can't be talking about that <laughs> or whatever. So I think, but data is helping though. I think uh, there is a focus on like the end experience and the design and I think that's kind of helping it better. And plus there are more and more people are collaborating together. So that's also helping. What is the biggest web or coding issue that you're running into right now? Uh, well, I don't code per se myself, but I think layout, especially the modern web layout, is like insanely complex and it's really hard to understand. Whether you're a designer or a developer, it doesn't matter. It's just very, very hard and I think that's a thing that we should help solve early on better. And especially because browsers do things differently. Mm -hmm. Each browser has its own variant, like oh, IE does like earlier versions of some grid layout while other browsers do the new versions. So it's like, it's confusing and it's very annoying. What was the biggest issue for you five years ago, and how, how was it addressed, if it was addressed? Yeah, five years ago, um, I feel my biggest issues were around, like, uh, not having jQuery kind of a thing, like, you know, not having some sort of uh, easy framework to get started on with JavaScript. I didn't understand JavaScript, so I wouldn't use it. Mm -hmm. So I think that was a big part, and not having debugging tools, and now we have very powerful debugging tools and that's really great. So that was like, before that was like a, browsers were black boxes, I would just type some CSS, hope that <laughs> it gets translated. But now, like now I know exactly why and especially for me, I've worked at, like uh, with developers who create code for browser engines, so I understand browser engines now. So for me, it's like I know exactly what happens and that's been very powerful because even though I don't code now, I know exactly why things don't render. And that's, that's really useful, and I don't think many developers have that. Last question for you, what people or projects are you following? Um, for web, I am I'm usually now focusing really a lot on user feedback and user research and what people are saying and using the web for and what are the trends in industry. I'm a product manager now, so like for me all these things are more interesting. And mostly I'm following the user experience, how that looks like on the web or on different mediums, how people are adapting experiences for browsers or apps. And for me, that's, Slack has been really good for that. And I've been following like people who work on Slack. And uh, also, in terms of web itself, I'm not following a lot of people. I'm following more designers and like analysts and less of developers and browser engineers.
That's great. Well, thank you for being with us. Thank you.